Hello my soccer universe, for a look back at round 36 of this Serie A season on the past weekend and the big news, Bologna are in the Champions League. Congratulations Thiago Motta, what a job for Bologna. For me, Bologna always have been one of the bigger teams in Italy but never quite up there with the really big hitters but you know Bologna is a decent sized town with uh, you know quite some culinary impact I would say it's also a really nice town to visit has been a while that I've, I've been there but just for me the the thought of the Dallara being in the Champions League one of the most iconic stadiums in Italy with this huge brick tower I know this stadium probably needs to be uh, renovated or, you know, readjust a little bit, but that brick tower has to stay. This is one of the most iconic things. And side note, um, Bologna are known for their covered walkways. You actually can walk, if it's raining, from the downtown Bologna to the stadium without getting wet. This is one of the nice things about Bologna that I really, really, really love. But they also have a few other nice features in there. Uh, really cool stuff. I think this is the best Bologna have been since the Baggio days, I want to say. Yes, Roberto Baggio played one season for Bologna. He didn't join Parma because famously Ancelotti didn't think he fits in the system. And that's also the genesis of Ancelotti as one of the best coaches around. So it all starts with Bologna in a way. They're a huge team. They also have won, I think, uh, I want to say eight championships, but maybe not quite. But most of them came, of course, in the 20s and the 30s. So um, it's really good to see them up there. Uh, I'm really, really happy for our first team. It's also a really good team that I really hope can stay together. Most importantly, that Thiago Motta stays for at least one more season. Do a Xabi Alonso at uh, like, like at Leverkusen. And again, for me, the Bologna story should be much more power publicized. It is up there with one of the great stories this season. So uh, congratulations to Thiago Motta and his team. We also have an absolutely mad relegation battle in Italy. We have six teams within five points, even better, five teams within two points. Uh, between Ellas at 34 points and Frosinone at 32 points, there is not much in between them. And the other thing is that every week it seems like that one team in the relegation gets a win and then moves out. We had a lot of Cagliari who were down, 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 moving up. Then we had last uh, weekend, we had Ellas getting a win, going out, and then now it is Ellas Verona. Will this continue? At the moment, it doesn't look good for Empoli, Frosinone, and so on. But you, and of course, Sassuolo, who are all the way down as well. There have, has also been a really huge game uh, between the two Europa League fighters, the semi-final final finalists uh, for this last Champions League spot, which we'll talk a little a little bit later. Needless to say, Atalanta are just an undeniable force at this very, very moment. And then I want to also, before we go into the games, talk about two uh, notes from the Milan sphere, being a Milan fan myself. For first of all, I really loved what they did for Mother's Day. And yes, there were six other teams that did that as well. By putting the mother's surnames or even the mother's first names on the back of their jerseys. Uh, there's also a larger context in that that it used to be in Italy. It's not anymore. It's also important to note that uh, children only had to have their father's name last name. The mother's name could never have happened. So actually to elevate the mother's name. Absolutely loved that one. It looked a little bit odd at, at, at the times, but I really like the idea. It's a great initiative, you know, to celebrate Mother's Day as well. There also came one of the greatest jokes out there. Leo, of course, had his mother's last name, Concesao, on there with um, Concesao being linked to Milan as a coaching replacement coming from Porto. Pure said, if I would have seen that last name, he would not have started. Great stuff. Great stuff. And then... Arrivederci Olivier Giroud, he has now, after three seasons with Milan, signed a deal with LAFC. He will leave a hole in the attack, although on the other side he's getting up there in age, so he was a little bit immobile, still scoring some great goals, but uh, he's, you know, I remember last season when he and Zlatan were playing, it was like the two light towers up, up front, Milan wants to go a, a shorter route, still. He was amazing for Milan, especially in his first season. The turn he made to win in the end the derby against uh, Inter, which meant that Milan would go on to win the championship, will live forever in the memory of all Milan fans. 
I already thought of him as a really good Google striker. Now he is one of my all-time favorite strikers. He broke the curse of the nine at Milan. Ever since Inzaghi left, up until Giroud, number nine was cursed. Giroud broke that, that curse even better. So, mille grazie, mille, mille grazie, Olivier. I will always remember you. Uh, I have two Milan jerseys now with uh, Giroud on, on, on the back and at the World Cup, of course, I got the World Cup France jersey. Also with Giroud because he broke the goal scoring record as a Milan player. Uh, fondly remembered, fondly remembered the leadership, uh, the skill, every, everything there. As I said, I wish he would have come to Milan a little bit sooner uh, when he was still in better, better form, but an absolutely amazing player. So again, Thank you very much. Let's walk through the games. Frosinone in the relegation battle had to face Inter. And while Fratesi gave Inter the lead in the first half, Frosinone definitely would have deserved at least an equalizer. They really had Inter on, on the ropes. And they might have thought that they could do more, but then Arnautovic make mix soon and then it became a rout. Tejan Buchanan, Alator Martinez and uh, Thuram make it 5-0. It's a bad result for uh, Frosinone. As a promoted side that is admittedly from a small town, but that actually is not hunkered down, but actually playing forward, which is really nice to see. So in that, that sense, I, I would love if they could survive at the moment. They are in the relegation zone because of that. So yeah, gotta see where it, it, it will go. Um, Bologna didn't take long to secure their Champions League spot uh, by winning 2-0 at Napoli. Yeah, Napoli again falling out of the uh, European spots at, at the moment. It was a blocked Xerxes shot in the ninth minute, then falls on the outside and comes across in. Again, deflected and Doye from a short distance has, 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 has it in. And then a similarly odd attack uh, after Calafiori cross, sees Porsche heading it freely uh, in, into net. 12th minute, it was done. Yes, there was a penalty given for uh, Napoli after foul on Osimen. Papolitano sees his effort saved. Napoli not looking great, unfortunately. Um, I always wondered, would it be good for them to be in Europe? Would it be bad for them in, in, in Europe? You know, this is a team that has to regroup. They have to finally get a coach that is working, they probably have to get a new sporting director as well and certain presidents should a little bit step down because this is a Napoli side that can definitely, they just have been changed. Members. This is a Napoli side that should actually or has the stuff of becoming a dynasty. However, I think they'll be selling off quite a few players. De Laurentiis likes to make money, let's put it that way. Um, Milan's 5-1 over Car Calgary was actually quite, quite enjoyable. And this was on Saturday evening, you know, where uh, we had the chance to see the Northern Lights. So I was half looking out of the window here, half watching game. The first half, honestly, I didn't miss much. I mean, Benazia gives Milan the 35th minute lead. And again, you know, also Calgary were wearing their mother's uh, names on jerseys. I think Verona did the same thing, uh, I want to say Genoa and, and so on. It's not only Milan, but uh, Milan was, of course, the one that I was most um, aware of. Calgary actually tried to probably get an equalizer and they were caught out by Milan. It was like a hot knife through butter. Leao brilliantly assisting with a well-timed uh, pass. Pulisic makes it 2-0. Uh, Nandas then pulls one back. However, then in 74th minute when Reinders uh, from a long range shot makes it 3-1. It was clear Milan is going to win this one and they won it easily. Another really nicely timed pass by Benazir to Leao and Okafor assisting Pulisic that was just cleared behind the line. 5-1. It uh, was actually a good performance. Yes, the Ultras again were not in support there out of protest against the leadership. I think last week should have been enough why they continue it. I, I don't know. I think the most important thing for Milan is now they have secured the sec second place. I think it is an okay season. I think the squad has potential for more if you pull the right strings. Uh, and maybe either get a coach that you fully support or if you stick with, with purely really get him players that he can work with. I think you can do it there. I think you could push Inter for the, for the, for the title next season. Because Inter will have to sell as well. But they are really good in replacing players. So I don't want to say that. Uh, I think what is really bitter is that they lose two derbies against Inter. That you uh, got uh, ousted out of the Champions League. Unluckily so. And then uh, rather emphatically by Roma from the Europa League. That is what puts the damper overall on the season. 
But yeah, second place, meaning you play in the Super Cup, but that I'm not interested in. This is a, just a bogus tour tournament, especially since you play in Saudi Arabia. It's what was playing in Italy. We might talk about this on this channel, but I'm gonna ignore it. Lazio, 2 0 over em Empoli. Empoli also needing the points, not enough. Two late goals in either, either half. Uh, Patrick and Vecino, uh, Getty getting the goals, and I have to mention it. Giri Mobile putting in his application for the fall on the floor uh, for the best uh, fake. I think he gets touched, but what he makes out of it, really, really embarrassing. Italy, but then I love Italy. Honestly, this is part of the spectacle of the whole thing. Uh, we had then two other rally relegation games. Uh, Sassuolo had a one lead in January. Yes, a Thorsby uh, goal uh, early on was ruled out for handball, but then uh, Sassuolo get a penalty, the Pinamonte converts. Would have been huge for Sassuolo to get, get a win there to make the relegation battle even tighter. However, in the second half, Genoa, who again will finish mid-table, and this is for a promoted team, really good. Another great coaching job by a former uh, great player in Giladino. Always remember him as well. Uh, I think this is also a coach that I want to see a little bit more develop. I hope, hope he will stay with Genoa and not go for a big job uh, immediately. Badel and Kumbula, an own goal turn it around and so January get at the point meaning that Sassuolo will probably go down I wouldn't say that I'm really sad I mean they have become a quantity they have been a solid mid-table team sometimes uh, scratching the European spots I think they were once in the Europa League a lot of talent came out of there uh, you know like your Berardi Locatelli the coaching talent as well uh, so that's the positive on the, on the negative they don't even play in their own stadium it's always half empty so I'm not sure I'm gonna miss Sassuolo all that much should they go down although they have made some history and as a Milan fan with them always win having a knack for winning against us yeah I will not regret it although there's also winning a championship at your ground, no, in Reggio Emilia, <laughs> that's not your, your your ground, but that was also a big one. And then another one, uh, where Verona had a one nil lead against Tortorino, and if they would have won, they would have been clear. However, uh, so it was a beautiful goal through Svetelski. However, uh, um, Torino turned, turned, turned around. Uh, Lazaro, Austrian, uh, assists both goals. First by Sava, a Cypriot, and then Pellegri. Really weird goal, a double doink. I mean, uh, from an acute angle, he hits the far, far post. It goes uh, on the backside of the near post. And in he has not scored in a long, long time. So, uh, first goal this, this season. So, at least a former Italian talent looking on the up as well and then we had uh juve's display against Sal Sanitana. Sanitana had a lead they deserved that lead at halftime that's how bad juve were allegri's time clearly seems to be over at this point uh there's not much yes in the second half the trial they, they had chances they got the equalizer through rabio at least the squad had the decency of not celebrating the shots of some fans celebrating that equalizer seemed really weird because who is Juve, who is Sal Sanitana? Juve is a team that should challenge, uh, or, you know, should always finish up up there and should easily beat Sal Sanitana. It looked really odd uh, seeing fans celebrate them. I guess it's the inner there, but it doesn't feel right. This is a team that has been relegated for a long time or, or already. So Juventus, and I don't want to take away from the great first half of the season. They were actually the only challengers to Inter for a while, but then in January it all fell, fell apart, and since then it's middling uh, at best, I would say. At least they have qualified for the Champions League, so after a year's absence they are back, and let's see where this will go, where, whether there will be a new coaching appointment, or whether they see the contract out with Allegri, who is of course one of the best play, uh, paid coaches in the league and yes you has to look out for the finances as well the big game this round definitely had to be atalanta against roma first off because both teams did really well in the europa league uh atalanta steamrolling om and roma having leverkusen on the ropes they couldn't get the job done though but that was also an amazing uh feat However, Atalanta, this was only going one way. It was all Atalanta in the first half. I mean, the two goals by the Ketala came in a really short succession in the 18th and 20, uh, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 minute. But the Ketala hit once the post. I think there was another post hit and uh, Cope Miners from a short, uh, from a distance could not pull it in. It is 
if this was even 4 or 5 nil for Atalanta in the first half, this would have been reflective of the game. The 2 nil was really flattering Roma. It really, as we said, it was really flattering Roma there. So, uh, in the second half, more of that. And then suddenly there's a penalty. Uh, the Pele Pellegrini converts. And suddenly it's a game. Pellegrini actually had had a shot, but then also uh, Atalanta wasting chances. This is my only real worry for Atalanta in the Europa League final, that they will create chances, but no not make it. But if you haven't seen Atalanta, watch this Atalanta team. They have great strikers in Lukman and Skamaka. They have the Ketelare, a Belgian talent that, yes, he didn't do great at Milan, but I think it's also down to coaching and the way he, he came in, maybe also the shoulders. There's a lot of weight at Milan if you're the marquee signing much less weight at At Atalanta. So really exciting players, but the one player that is everyone is only of a Pazalic in there as well, but the one player everyone is overlooking is Cope Miners. He's one, probably one of the best midfielders in Italy at this moment, and no one is talk talking about him. I guess the Europa League final might be the showcase, but there's also a game come, 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 come up this midweek that might actually put him a little a little bit higher, because even when they had all the players missing, Cope Miners kept Atalanta afloat. Really, probably at the moment, the best team. At this very moment, just in the short uh, distance, because Inter is kind of already on a celebration run. At the moment, Atalanta are the best team in Italy. There's no doubt about it. And um, they might gain some silverware this weekend or this week. Maybe ne ne next week as well. Let's see about that. Uh, Udine got a huge, pretty huge win away at Lecce, that's the one that now they were in the relegation zone, now they're lifted out of it, they're right behind uh, Ellas on 33 points, <laughs> level with Kaka Kaliri and you know, Empoli Frozen only on 32, it's so tight, the moment my model gives them a 9% chance of going down, which I think means they're sort of kind of safe, but better get a few points as well. And then Fiorentina got an important 2-1 win over Monza. Why important? Because they are now ahead of Napoli in the Conference League spot. They're also in the Conference League final. So they have a um, double chance to again finish in Europe. I always feel that this Fiorentina team, if they had finishing, they probably would be right there with your Atalantas and the Romas. It's a really fun team to watch. Again, they had to come from around. Juric, who at the moment is hitting his uh, stride on Mon Monza gave the lead, but then Gonzalo and Artur Melo with a really great shot uh, turn turn around for Fio Fiorentina. Now, uh, at the moment, Italy have eight European spots, and this would remain this way, I think. Uh, if it remains as is, Napoli will be on the outside uh, looking in. If Atalanta should win the Europa League, then Roma will get the champ Champions League spot, but that does, does mean that I don't think everything gets them pushed down. It just means that there would be just one Europa League spot, except if Fiorentina win the Conference League, then there are two Europa League spots, but there would be no Italian team in there, in the Conference League, except, and I think this, this is how it goes, Napoli, leapfrog Fiorentina, and Fiorentina win the Conference League. Then we have 19 uh, CSR teams next, team, next year. So you know exactly what needs to happen <laughs> there. Uh, already said, we have a midweek round first between Atalanta and Juventus, which will have no implication there, but it might be the crowning achievement for Atalanta. However, Juventus, uh, we had this not too long ago, where Juventus then won, where also Atalanta were seen as the favorites. However, on form, it needs to be at Atalanta. I really wish this for at Atalanta. But then we also have the upcoming games for uh, the weekend, where we have a pretty big one Friday between Fiorentina and Napoli. Now, if Fiorentina wins the conference, like, would Napoli want to win? Other than that, you know, uh, I think Fiorentina would deserve it more uh, on uh, level. We have also a big name matchup between Inter and Lazio. Two big names, it doesn't really have much bearing on the championship because Lazio will finish um, uh, in, the, in the Europa League spots. Bologna will play uh, Juventus also, you know, third and fourth, but not much bearing on the, on the end of the table. But we have to, of course, look at the relegation battle. Legend, probably safe, but not quite out. They have to play Atalanta, who might save some players because, you know... Champions League is more or less secured. You have the uh, Cup Final and you have the Europa Cup Cup Final. Uh, 
Europa League final a little bit later. So that might do it for Lecce. We have then a head-to-head -head between Sassolo and Cagliari. Must win for Sassolo, but Cagliari should avoid defeat. Might see them save another head-to-head -head between Udine and M Empoli. Rather, rather big game. And then Solentana already um, down. If Verona gets something out there, I think Verona will also be safe come the final round. However, if there's more chaos, we get a really great last day of the season. That was it from me. Please let me know where you think Serie A will be going, especially the relegation battle will be interesting. Will Italy get nine teams? That well, might be a whole, whole lot, but I would love to see that. I would love to see that, on, honestly. Especially if Atalanta win the Europa League and they get six in, in the Champions League, this would be... Serie is back, baby. Yeah, not quite. Not, not, no, not quite. But, but it's good to see Italian teams do well in Europe. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.